when you come home from the rain barrel workshop, you will have what you see in front of you, a complete rain barrel in blue. This one has been used, so you'll disregard the fact that it's a little bit grubby. You'll have the strainer, and you'll have the downspout, the flexispout. The flexispout will be attached to your house. Some of you will have to cut a gutter. Some of you can just disassemble it like that. Once you've done that, you'll notice that this is a 2 by 3 gutter. This is the 3 by 4 end. This is the 2 by 3 end. So you're going to attach the 2 by 3 end so you'll cut the 3 by 4 end off and discard it. If you had a 3 by 4 gutter, you'd go the other direction. Once you've done that, you end up with this, which is expanded. Now, in order to fasten this, we gave you a packet with five little screws in it. Two screws for here, two screws for up here, and one screw to lose, which we frequently do. These screws are just installed. They're simply, simply, them through the plastic. Once they're in, they hold the basket in place until you're ready to empty it after a rain event, in which case you'll squeeze it, take it out, empty it, and put it back in place. The basket is going to go inside along with this. Now you've got to attach this end to the gutter. Okay, it's really simple too. There are little dimples even on the side. And okay, we go. Now this homeowner has fortunately a nice level driveway and they've chosen to build it up to this height. You can do it with two cinder blocks, with four, with eight the middle pieces put in if you like anything but be sure that if you put center blocks in the web is facing up so that they're the strongest configuration this thing will weigh 440 pounds when it's full 55 gallons of water that's extremely heavy you do not want that falling on your cat or your kid the barrel goes up on the stand this is six feet long. You've got a lot of room to compress it. If you'd like, you can go around the corner and actually set this much further away from the drain if you'd like. You simply install this in and you're ready for rain. Once you've got it full, use it hose or a bucket underneath it, anything you want. You've got your overflow over here. You want to direct the overflow away from the house. That is important. You don't want to put rainwater into your basement. After you have your rain barrel, if you just decide that this blue is not aesthetically pleasing, you can paint the rain barrel. This was quite attractively done. You've got the little dragon and the little lady. That's an important thing that we didn't show on the other one is that you've got to have a hose attached to your overflow to point it away from your house. You don't want the overflow running into your basement. Uh, but as you can see, you can paint them, decorate them any way you want. Uh, this one is painted both sides, of course, a different dragon, but it's quite lovely. For painting your rain barrel, we recommend that you use a primer of spray paint and then use acrylics because they seem to last better. Uh, after you've done it with acrylics, I would actually go over it with a clear coat to protect it. They, but you can see this has been outside for four or five years and it's doing real well. Uh, do not use magic markers because they tend to fade very fast in the sunlight so they're not really recommended but any acrylic paint just have a ball you can use spray paint uh, the krylon makes a paint for plastics 
that's very, very useful. We also have the Rainy Day Brush Off, which is a competition among local artists. This is where this came from. We'll be uh, having these auctioned at our website. And every year we've had the Rainy Day Brush Off. We've had very pretty barrels and they're relatively inexpensive. They go at auction on eBay, so look it up. Visit our website, Water Quality Forum.